if um, you didn't know, my name is Erin Skinner, and I'm going to take you through today the four scientifically proven tips that dietitians use to eliminate tummy troubles. If at any point my video is in the way of something you want to see on the slides, you should be able to drag it over. So um, keep that in mind. All right, so in this seminar, here's what I'll teach you. Exactly how to implement these four tricks so that you can reduce gas, floating, reflux, stool irregularity, and abdominal pain by at least 80% within three weeks. First though, I wanna make sure that you get the information that you need today. So make sure you um, turn off the TV in the background, put your air, um, iPhone in airplane mode or do not disturb mode, just so that you can focus on um, getting all this content today. Also make sure you stick around until the end because I'm gonna give away um, a free bonus that is only available to those of you who come to the live seminar. So stick around for that and I'll explain to you about what it is at the end, but it's pretty awesome. So just to kind of kick this off, um, if you can find that little chat console, please um, type in there a yes or no response for me. Are you frustrated that nothing seems to fix your digestive problems, not even visiting your doctor or trying special diets or taking dietary supplements? Yes or no, is that true for you? And also can you tell me, has food actually become a confusing and scary world in which you're never actually sure what to eat? Is that true for you, yes or no? And finally in that chat box, do you feel like your digestive problems have a major impact on your relationships, on your career, and on your enjoyment of life? So this isn't just a minor inconvenience. This is having a real impact on your life. And um, thanks for your replies. I'm seeing those yes replies in the chat window. Of course, you know, obviously I'm sorry to hear that you're struggling with this, but um, I'm glad you're here because um, if you can relate to any of those, um, you're the exact type of person that can benefit from this information. So here's how to know you're in the right place today. First of all, if you feel like you've just gone around and gotten a ton of digestive health advice, you've tried all of it and none of it's really fixed the problem and it's actually made you more confused, um, then this is for you. If you kind of feel like you just want something that you can apply that's simple and that gives you results, um, that you're in the right place. You're also in the right place if you feel overwhelmed by all the information that's out there, it seems to be conflicting and confusing, you just wanna know what to do and then you wanna know how to have that actual time to actually do it. And then finally, you're in the right place if you actually feel anxious and scared by all of this and you feel like it's starting to ruin your life and you're not sure where to turn next, um, you're tired of being embarrassed by this inconvenience and in pain and you're losing faith in finding a solution. So you've tried things, it's failed and you're starting to worry that um, you're not gonna be able to figure out how to fix it. If these apply to you, then stick around because um, I'm gonna help you through it. So you might be wondering who I am to be giving all these digestive um, health tips today. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm dual credentialed in the United States and the United Kingdom where I used to live. I also hold a board certification in integrative and functional medical nutrition therapy. And I have a private practice, Real Nutrition Rx, where I've helped hundreds of people achieve IBS remission. My approach isn't conventional, so I don't work in some clinic passing out chintzy hands outs. I actually use something called integrative and functional medicine where I address the root cause, um, the underlying problem behind your symptoms. And this approach is really catching on. You may have heard of it. Um, there's some famous people that do it like Dr. Axe and Dr. Hyman, but I've been featured in quite a few publications and on webinars and published my first book because a lot of people are just sick of getting you know, a medication and being sent on their way and basically not getting results from their um, traditional medical care provider. So here's why I'm actually coming out and sharing these secrets with you today. Um, you know, to really explain this, I'd have to kind of give you a little bit of my story. From the first uh, beginning of me being a dietitian, I focused on digestive health and pretty quickly I got really good at it. I started to refine and learn this technique that I'm going to teach you. And I was getting really good results for people um, that had digestive problems. And 
it was very gratifying and made me very happy for a while. But then um, I started to get pretty frustrated on the behalf of my clients because I kept seeing everybody come in. It was like I went to my doctor. Um, either they wouldn't tell me what to do or they told me I had to find a dietitian that knows about this and I couldn't find one or I can't afford to pay for one. Um, and I started to realize that this whole thing is out there and it works, but people have a hard time accessing it. And it started to kind of sit wrong with me basically. And then basically what happened next is I had this client, this is kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. Her name was Beryl. She was a really sweet grandma with seven grandkids, but her IBS was so bad that she was almost housebound by it. And her family had to help care for her, had to, you know, clean her laundry for her, even when she had an accident. I mean, it was very embarrassing for her, very like difficult for her family. And so they brought her to me. And um, in the traditional setting, people, you know, Beryl might not have been taught this technique because it's considered to be a little bit like complicated and that's what you have to find the right dietitian and blah, blah, blah. But fortunately at that point, I had refined this approach and developed so many really great handouts and templates and simplified it to where I thought, you know, Beryl can do this. So I gave it to her, I sent her on her way, and then um, a few months later, I ran into her at Sainsbury, which is a grocery store there in England, and she looked like a million bucks, and she was feeling good, and she gave me a big hug, and she said, thank you, this changed my life, you know, I'm playing with my grandkids, I'm going out with my friends, it was awesome, and so it was really exciting, but then that night, I was like, I'm in bed going to sleep, and I kind of had this epiphany that, you know what? If Beryl can do this, dang, anybody can do it because she didn't even know how to use a computer, okay? So I thought, you know, this doesn't need to be some secret thing that you have to meet with a special dietitian to do. I need to help people get access to this and make it not cost like a fortune just to learn it. So I really became obsessed with getting this out into the world and giving people more access to it, and that's why I'm doing this. So um, just if you can, take a second. I want you to imagine what it would be like to experience the results that my clients consistently get with this approach. They get freedom from, from pain and from bloating, from reflux, and from gas. They have normal bowel movement. So imagine what this would be like. You have certainty around food choices. You know what foods to eat and what foods to limit or to avoid. You can go out to a restaurant, you can go out to a party, you can travel without fear of what's gonna happen or where the toilet is at any given moment. Imagine having great energy, great mental clarity, great mood, and finally, imagine your digestive problems no longer impacting every aspect of your life, your social life, your personal relationships, and your career. That's what people achieve from this, and that's what I want for you, honestly, so we'll get into it. Here's what we'll actually go over today. We're gonna to talk about irritable bowel syndrome or IBS because that's the name I'm giving to these symptoms that we're talking about. And if you're not diagnosed with IBS, stick with me because that's, that's not necessarily a problem. We're gonna talk about what quickly improves it, the approach that I'm talking about. We're gonna talk about how to actually expand and enjoy your diet and your food how to optimize your results on this, and why your individuality is actually a good thing that can benefit you. So just a few quick notes on uh, IBS. It's the symptoms we've been talking about over and over, the cramping, the pain, the bloating and gas, the diarrhea and constipation. Reflux is helped by this approach as well, although it's not a classic IBS symptom. There's the three subtypes, C, constipation, D, diarrhea, and for mixed and unclassified. But here's what's really critical to know, you guys, and you probably already know this, but um, just so we're on the same page, IBS is a diagnosis of exclusion. And what that means is that if you have digestive problems and you go into your doctor and you tell them that, they're going to test you for a bunch of other things like cancer and inflammatory bowel disease and celiac disease. And then if they don't find you have any of those, they say, oh, it's just IBS, and they kind of send you on your way. Um, with maybe a prescription that doesn't really do much for you. But basically, with a few rare exceptions, you can't really test positive for IBS. And the reason why that's important to know is that 
they haven't really said what's going on with you when they say you have IBS. So whether you've given, been given this label or not isn't really so much what matters. It's if you have these symptoms, this approach will work for you. They use this Rome criteria to make the official IBS diagnosis. Okay, you've had the symptoms for six months, and for the last three months, it's been one day per week. You might not fit exactly into that framework, but still, again, if you have these symptoms, this approach will work for you. And then finally, a note on IBS, around one in five adults actually meet the criteria of having IBS, but not 20% of adults are diagnosed. It's only about 5% of adults. So you might be thinking, I really feel like I have these symptoms, but my doctor hasn't diagnosed me. Very likely, that's about 15% of the adult population has um, IBS, you know, technically by their symptoms, but they just don't have the diagnosis yet. So whether you're diagnosed or not, stick with me through this talk. This benefit will help, this approach will benefit you. And um, don't worry so much about the label that you might have in your medical chart. Most importantly, I know it's a nightmare to deal with this. If you've ever felt sort of dismissed in the traditional medical establishment, like, oh, here's an antidepressant or something like it's all in your head. Um, I'm here to tell you it's not all in your head and it is a big deal and it's a nightmare to deal with. So I'm glad you're here so that you can learn how to turn it around. There's definitely hope. I've helped hundreds of people achieve IBS remission and I'm really excited to show you how I do it. So of our four tricks, the first one I'll spend the most time on is to um, use scientifically proven techniques um, that are shown to be effective. And I'm gonna explain to you what I mean by that and why that's so important. In order to do that, I wanna tell you about this client I had. Her name was Beth. She came to me with really severe diarrhea, IBS. She was very malnourished and very underweight. When I assessed Beth, I found that she had quite a few restrictions in her diet. These are all the things she was restricting. And basically where these came from was everywhere. She had heard from one person to take out histamine. She'd heard from somebody else to take out gluten. She had heard from her doctor to take out spicy foods. And so she had kind of pieced this all together, which is basically what everybody with IBS does, right? You're kind of looking for the answer, trying things and taking stuff in and out and trying to figure out what works. So that's Nothing against Beth that she was doing this, but basically here's what happened. She had gotten down over the years to this diet that kept her able to like exist and go to work and everything, but eating only like these four things, toast, chicken, gluten-free muffins, rice. So what had happened was she had developed significant nutrient deficiencies because of this. And um, her gut also was not absorbing well so that it further downward spiral, but she was basically, because of her poor nutrient status, she had developed these new problems, anxiety, poor immune function, frequent illness, insomnia, and tooth decay. So here's what we did for Beth. I got her on this scientifically proven system that I'm going to teach you about. She improved nutritionally, first of all, because she was able to broaden her diet and tolerate her food without getting her IBS flared. She started to gain weight back to a healthy weight and she um, achieved full IBS recovery within two months of starting. So when all around, and it's all because of this um, complete system that I'm gonna teach you. And basically what it is, it's the low FODMAP, really it's a protocol, even though you'll hear the word diet because there's phases to it. Now, if you've heard of low FODMAP or if you've even tried it before, stick with me because I'm going to tell you why, even if you think it doesn't work for you, um, why it's worth a second thought. Okay. I'm going to show you even some examples that hopefully you'll think are fun. But um, first, let me get into some scientific evidence for the low FODMAP diet, why it's actually um, been proven to be effective and why that's important. So there's about 20 clinical trials of the low FODMAP diet. I won't bore you by going through each and every one. But here's a few summary slides. They've done a few studies like this where they basically um, take a group of people that have IBS and they get a dietitian to teach them how to do low FODMAP. And basically around 70 to 80% of them achieve IBS remission within three to four weeks. And then what about that other 20 to 30%? They 
generally all, almost all of them experience some improvement. It just doesn't meet the cutoff for like remission. So, I mean, think about that. Almost the vast majority of them, the IBS is gone. Like the symptoms are gone. And then for everybody else, significant improvement. So it's very powerful. And then um, another group of studies that have been done basically compares the low FODMAP diet to traditional IBS advice. So like you go in your um, PCP and you say you have diarrhea, they say, okay, well, you have IBS, um, don't drink caffeine, don't eat foods like broccoli that are gassy, um, don't eat huge meals and like stay away from fat. They compare that head to head with low FODMAP and found that, oh yeah, low FODMAP definitely outperforms that every time. So if you're still being given that outdated information, that's not as effective. And then just as a summary of everything, they did a meta-analysis in this gastroenterology journal gut back in 2017. And what that means is they looked at all of the evidence for low FODMAP and their summary is that, okay, yeah, we're going to go ahead and say as a group of GI docs, there's convincing evidence for this low FODMAP diet. It might not sound like a big statement because they're very conservative, but keep this in mind. They've never said that for any diet for IBS ever. So that is actually a pretty big statement from them. Bottom line, uh, to summarize the research, in the studies, they find 70 to 80% of people achieve remission on the diet. In my practice, it's closer to 90% because it's like I said with Beryl, I fine-tuned this and I made it plug and play and I made it work for real life. But 70 to 80% in these clinical trials, there's no medication on the market, you guys, that can achieve that. And I'm sure you're well aware of that because if there was a pill that fixed this, um, I would say go get it, but unfortunately that pill doesn't exist. So um, thank goodness for the low FODMAP protocol because it's incredibly powerful. So if you um, if you aren't already aware, and you might be, but if you're not aware of what a FODMAP is, it is kind of a weird word. Let's get into that. FODMAP is actually an acronym, and so what it's talking about is um, certain types of carbohydrates in your diet. Some of them are fibers and some are sugars. And this is not a low carbohydrate diet like keto or something like that, but certain types of carbohydrates are not broken down and absorbed well in your gut. And what that causes is IBS symptoms, basically, when those undigested FODMAPs pass through your gut. So um, let's get into specifically what this is. If you break down the acronym of FODMAP, here's what it stands for. Fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. So you might be thinking, oh, okay, I'm out. I don't need anything called polyols. I've never heard of that. Well, how about this? Let me show it to you this way. Look at all these foods and drinks. This is just a small sampling of what is generally very high in FODMAPs. So um, these are very common, right? Who doesn't have some fruits and vegetables, or some protein bars, or some garlic and onion, some soda milk or tea. I mean, it goes on and on. Um, so unless you're expressly prohibiting, uh, avoiding FODMAPs in your diet, you're getting them. And that's actually um, kind of a good thing if you think about it, because if you um, know you have FODMAPs in your diet, great. You've got right there, you're a perfect candidate for the system. If you have your workbook or just a piece of paper available, go ahead and like for me write down a couple of these like things that stood out to you that maybe you have in your diet on a weekly basis. And um, if there's more than one or two of, on here that you eat, um, you know, you're basically ready to go with low FODMAP to give it a try. So here's how it happens with FODMAPs and how it causes symptoms. I won't go into this for too long, but basically, you can kind of think of FODMAPs like a lock or any food like a lock and then your body produces these enzymes, digestive enzymes that are like the key to open the lock. But what happens with FODMAPs is that your body doesn't produce the right enzyme to break it down or it doesn't produce the right key to open the lock, right? So these FODMAPs pass down through your gut undigested and here's the two things that happen. The first thing is water gets pulled into your gut because of the osmolarity of those FODMAPs. It pulls in water. The second thing that happens is that for sure in your colon, there's definitely bacteria there. That's going to digest the FODMAPs. Like 
it's like fast food for bacteria. They're gonna digest those FODMAPs and produce gas as their waste product. And then for like 70% around of people with IBS, there's also bacteria in the small intestine that shouldn't be there, and that's called SIBO, and that makes this gas problem even worse. But basically, between these two things, what you end up with is a gut that's full of water and gas, and you can imagine what that causes, right? Bloating, diarrhea, cramping, pain, reflux, um, all the symptoms of IBS. So here's the solution for this the low FODMAP protocol. And what that does is it allows you to find your broadest possible diet. So, you know, eating as many foods as possible while minimizing the water and gas in your gut. And that's what gives you the 80% improvement in the vast majority of cases. So you might be thinking that sounds pretty good. Let's get these FODMAPs um, out of my diet. Um, how do I do it? Well, there's um, low FODMAP, it's not difficult or complicated if you have the right resources, but there's a few concepts that are really important to understand. So first of all, it's a learning protocol. And what that means is that it's not just like a one page handout that you say, eat this and not that forever, the end, have a nice life. You're, it's a process that you go through where you work towards learning what foods work for you and what foods don't in a systematic way so that you end up with your own personalized diet that works best for you while maximizing your ability to eat and enjoy your food, basically. Another big concept with this is that it's an elimination diet with phases. So what I'll see people do a lot of times is they'll just do the taking out part, but just as critical as the taking out part is the adding back. So it's really critical to go through the, that process of taking out and then adding back. And I'll explain more about what I mean by that later, but that's a big concept for it. And then another critical concept with low FODMAP is that, and this is nice, nothing is ever 100% off limits. If you feel like, I mean, obviously if you want something completely off limits, like you feel like you're gluten sensitive, or um, if you have a food allergy, of course you can have it completely out, but nothing has to be completely off limits by the rules basically of the low FODMAP protocol. Instead, it's this mentality of your gut being like a bucket and every FODMAP that you eat fills up your bucket a little bit or a lot, depending on what it is and how much you eat. If you follow the system, you learn pretty quickly and pretty easily how much of what foods will cause your bucket to overflow. As long as you don't have your bucket overflow, you're fine. But if your bucket overflows, that's an IBS flare. So um, it's basically the process of learning how much of what type of food makes your bucket overflow. And it's not uh, too complicated if you're on the right system. But unfortunately, what I see a lot of times is people not on the right system. They're kind of DIYing it. And why wouldn't they? They don't get access to a good system because of the way it's set up within the healthcare system. And so they're left with just trying to figure it out on their own. Doesn't always work very well. Um, so here's your end goal with it. You're trying to get to an individualized diet that eliminates your symptoms. Of course you are. But also you want the least possible restrictions, right? Because you don't want to be like Beth that has so many foods out of your diet that you start having new problems, right? So that's the goal of the low FODMAP protocol. You might be wondering what kind of like weird, crazy food I'm talking about here because there were a lot of foods on my example. It's actually great. The food is so good and it's not weird. Here's a few low FODMAP meals I've made recently for my family and I have three little boys. They eat this food and um, they don't even know what a FODMAP is. <laughs> but basically, here's a few. Salmon dinner, pancakes with bacon, cookies, Thai food, cottage pie, um, it's normal food. It's just about learning those nuances of what swaps to make so that you're not filling that bucket over too much. All right, just a quick note to you, if you feel like you've tried low FODMAP before and you haven't had luck with it, remember I said I want you to stick with me through this, okay? Let me give you two examples of things I found recently on Pinterest. This isn't specifically uh, for FODMAPs, but my whole point with this is that there's a lot of IBS information out there that's very incomplete and even unsafe. Like on this um, handout, they're saying avoid these IBS triggers and like sure enough, 
a lot of these foods aren't great for you, obviously, but most of the low FODMAP foods in the world aren't even listed here. And obviously taking out all of these like foods would leave your life like not very fun. So basically you'd be going to a diet that's not very fun and you'd still have IBS. So this is just kind of a waste of time because it's not a complete system. Again, what about all the other foods in the world? How long do you do this? What do you do next? Uh, you deserve better than this basically. And FODMAP specifically, if you've tried it, if you use something like this, I want you to stick with me because I got this off Pinterest and I've seen this a million times. Um, but basically, this is telling you what you should eat on the low FODMAP diet. And a few concerns I have with this are one, um, what about the other like 95% of foods in the world? Are those good or bad? Like you don't know. Two, there's some actual things that are incorrect on here. Um, they're just wrong. <laughs> so that wouldn't work. You would try this and think the low FODMAP diet's not for you because it's not, it's wrong or it's incomplete. Like with soy milk, there's actually two different types of soy milk. One's okay and one's not. They haven't clarified that. So really this just doesn't give you a fair chance if you have this. Nothing wrong with, you know, I credit these people for trying to help people with IBS, good on them. But this isn't going to really get you the results that you're looking for from low FODMAP. And it might even give you the impression that low FODMAP doesn't work for you. So um, just watch out for stuff like that. All right. So it's your turn to take action on your workbook there or on a piece of paper or wherever. Write down any places where you've gotten some information. Like Beth, my client, are you getting stuff off of blogs or Pinterest or Instagram? I'm not saying that everything you find online is wrong. And again, I give credit to these people for trying to help because there is so much help needed. But if you're piecing stuff together from random sources, that's not a complete science-based, evidence-proven approach. And in the end, it doesn't work very well. Um, and then the second thing to take note of is are you getting any anecdotal advice from maybe from free Facebook groups, from friends or family? A common thing I'll see is like somebody else with IBS says, oh, you know what? I, um, I took dairy out of my diet and it fixed the problem. So you just need to take out dairy, the end, solved it. And then you try it and it does nothing for you. So um, just take note of any anecdotal places you're getting information. I don't fault you if you haven't gotten on a complete system because again, there's so little access to it and that's why I'm here to help you with that. Getting on a complete system is what does the best for you and what's proven to be safe and effective and so that's the th best thing to do. What you can expect on the low FODMAP protocol is at least 80% improvement within three weeks um, and that's a pessimistic promise because I don't like to over promise. I like to under promise and over deliver but that's what you can expect. So you might be thinking, okay, girl, what si system can I get on that um, actually works? Here's a few um, resources of places where you can start. The traditional route, again, is to talk to your primary care provider, ask for a referral to a dietitian, and um, if they happen to know this special unicorn dietitian that's trained in low FODMAP and experienced in it and available and affordable, good for you, or if your insurance covers it, good for you. For 90% of people, it doesn't work out that way. So here's a couple other options. Um, Patsy and Kate are two dietitians that have been doing this a long time, and I trust their information, and they have some good content available. You can check out their websites. And guys, I'm going to send out these slides after the talk. So any um, websites or anything on here, don't feel like you need to frantically copy any of this down. Just, sit, just check your email uh, tonight for the link for the slides. Um, and then Monash University is um, who pioneered the low FODMAP protocol. You can get their app for about $10 or about, it's less than 10 pounds. They have a good little quick start guide and some accurate information on their app. Um, or stay tuned because at the end I'm going to tell you what I think is the best approach, but these are some other options. All right, trick number two, these are going to start moving a lot quicker. Focus on eating more and not less. And before you try to reach through your computer and hit me in the face, I'm not saying that you should just be able to tolerate tons of different foods. I'm saying um, use a systematic way to try to increase food variety if you've been on a limited diet, okay? And I'm gonna explain what I mean by that by telling you about this client I had named Jerry. He came to me actually not for his IBS, he came for um, a new autoimmune disease. He had um, psoriasis, which is an autoimmune condition of your skin. 
but he did have a long history of IBS constipation type and he was very fatigued. And when I assessed Jerry, I found that his autoimmune disease was stemming from a very dysfunctional immune system. And your immune system is very sensitive to your nutrition status. He had a lot of nutrient deficiencies and that's what caused his immune system to go haywire. And the reason why he had these nutrition deficiencies is that he had gone on low FODMAP like years prior, but only the first phase where you cut a lot of foods out of your diet. And it's meant to be two to six weeks that you do that. Instead of two to six weeks, he did like two to six years like that. And sure enough, um, started to develop new problems similar to Beth that we talked about before, except he was doing low FODMAP, but he wasn't going through all the phases, if that makes sense. So here's what we did for Jerry. We took him through that FODMAP reintroduction process. I'm going to teach you in a minute exactly how to do that. And we found out he mainly was just sensitive to one type of FODMAPs, and that was fructans. So about 80% of the foods that Jerry had cut out, we were able to bring back successfully without flaring his IBS, maintaining his remission, but also improving his immune function and improving his um, psoriasis. So um, this is what I'm talking about when I say being able to eat more foods um, by following the system of reintroducing and figuring out in a systematic way of what works for you and what doesn't. Really important here, um, like I said, you don't want to be too limited for too long, even if it makes your IBS better, it's still not safe. So your turn to take action on your worksheet there. Just jot down any foods you can think of that you're limiting. And if there's none, that's fine. But I just find based on doing this for years with hundreds of people, virtually almost everybody with IBS is cutting foods out of your diet. And I don't blame you. You need to get through your day. But um, what I often see is they'll still be having IBS symptoms and the restrictive diet, and there is a better way that doesn't leave you malnourished and that doesn't leave you running to the toilet, you know, a few times a day. So um, make your nutrition status a big deal, and I'll teach you how to do that in a second. One other thing, though, other than food reintroductions, is getting on a quality multivitamin with minerals. I've seen this be effective over and over, but unfortunately, the products you can get at like Target, Walmart, or definitely don't do Amazon, is that um, there's a lot of stuff in there that can flare IBS. So fillers, prebiotics, probiotics, um, gluten, those can all be problematic and they can be in those like kind of like off the shelf types of multivitamins. So get on a quality product. If you need help, I can give you some suggestions, but um, that's a really important step. And then also consider your diet. Do you know for sure what FODMAP types you're sensitive to? Obviously, if you never heard of FODMAP types before today, you don't, but many of you are savvy and know all about FODMAPs. But if you um, haven't gone through the reintroduction process in the right way, that's a really critical step. Um, and it's systematic process that I'll teach you. Usually I'll like charge a consult to do this. So make sure you guys get this. Again, the slides are gonna go out to you later today, but here's how I do it. I have people try six different FODMAP types, one per week. And what I have them do is make some food with that FODMAP type. And then the first day they'll have just a quarter of a serving or if they're very sensitive, maybe an eighth of a serving. Each day, double it. So from an eighth to a quarter, half, one, two. And then if you get to two servings per day and you're fine with your IBS, you tolerate that FODMAP type. Obviously, you've got to keep the rest of your diet baseline, what's called the elimination phase of low FODMAP. So the rest of your diet stays low FODMAP. You start feeling good, and that way you can tell the effect of that FODMAP. If you um, start increasing the dose of that food and you're, you feel your IBS symptoms coming on, you know that you don't tolerate that FODMAP type and you stop. Okay, and then you keep record of this whole process. You have a three-day washout between types and then you take the six weeks or as long as you want to go through it. But the important thing is to do it. Here's um, the specific foods that I use in my practice, um, unless there's a reason we, ha we have to change it, we do. But here's what I generally recommend for people. So for example, let's say you're gonna challenge fructans this week. You'll make a, a big recipe of food that has onion or garlic or both, 
you'll eat just an eighth or a quarter of a serving, you'll double it each day from there. And that's how you figure out which you're sensitive to. With the rest of your diet, staying low FODMAP. Okay, so moving on to the third trick. And again, if you have questions, you can type them in that Q&A or the chat anytime and we'll get to the questions at the end. The third trick is to prepare before you jump in. And um, the, I thought the best way to explain this was, would be to give you a few examples of things that I've seen happen because I find that people hear about low FODMAP and they get very excited. And it is exciting because it's so powerful. But then um, it's very tempting to say, this is awesome, I'm gonna start today. That's not a good idea. And let me give you some examples. So um, this was actually my friend's client, but she, the client had mentioned that she was gonna be a bridesmaid for her sister's wedding, started low FODMAP, and between the stress and the prep and then the actual wedding day, the partying, the drinking that night, it all kind of fell apart. So it would have been better in that case to wait until after the wedding, right? Another thing that happened is I had a client that um, he hadn't told me about a big work deadline he had coming up because I think he thought it wouldn't be a big deal, but he ended up staying really late every night at the office, didn't have time to prepare food or to plan, and it all fell apart. So um, again, would have been better to wait until after that work deadline. Another one of my clients, um, this one, she just didn't know. She like started and then she had this unplanned like overseas trip come up. Foods were not in English. You're traveling, you don't have full control. You're not cooking. And um, of course it fell apart in that case. So that didn't work out well. And then finally I had this client where um, she started and she actually had a pretty um, calm calendar for the next few weeks. But every night her husband came with like a little bowl of ice cream and a cocktail and they would hang out and that kind of messed up the whole thing. She's like, I can't tell if it's working. I think I feel good. But then I have this ice cream and this gin and tonic at night. And then I, I don't know, it's, I, I don't feel that good. So um, that's, that's obviously not good prep, right? That she didn't have that ironed out with her husband. So really important to resist the temptation to jump right in. The timing is one of the things about that. So, you know, I gave you those examples. Holidays are another thing to think about. Now is good because Christmas is over, right? But other holidays can come into play. You really want two very quiet weeks to get into a groove and to get your feet under you. And then um, if you can have longer than that, that's great. If you want to be on the fast track plan, I have people do the two weeks on the first phase they get feeling really good, and then um, spend those six weeks reintroducing like I taught you. So you want to have kind of a quiet six weeks after that. Obviously, you're not going to have two months of your life with like nothing in it, but major life events is mostly what I'm talking about. And then another part of prep is really involving your family in your decision, like with that client, with her husband. After she talked to him and told him about it, um, he said, oh, I had no idea it had to be like 100%. So it was just more of a communication thing. Um, so involving your family in your decision, asking for their support, what is it that could help you? Maybe it's, um, this is front of mind for me, maybe help with childcare or um, help with taking the kids to and from soccer practice, whatever it may be that could help support you to have less stress and to be able to have time to shop for food and prepare food. Um, that's a great thing to get set up. All right, your turn to um, take action. Finally, um, this isn't, it depends on the resource that you're using. If you're going to use a resource like on your own, like go out and get a book or something like that, I usually see that not work out well for people because invariably questions come up. So if you're going to do something like that, it's great to um, find somebody who's IBS trained um, and low FODMAP trained who can guide you and support you. It's not always possible, but you can start with your doctor. I've included some links here of databases here in the US where you can search for a FODMAP trained dietitian to help you. And then um, in the UK, because I live and practice there, I've included a few links. There's not as many available outside of the NHS, but um, there's a few places where you can get started there if you don't have luck talking to your GP. All right, now your turn. Um, this is the critical point from this. Write down on your worksheet or your paper, I deserve support and a chance to succeed at healing. 
I put this in here because I've seen so many people with IBS who serve other people day in and day out and they take care of their kids and they take care of their family and they take care of their friends and their parents. You deserve to heal and to, um, to reverse this and to get free from it. And so, um, I just want to encourage you to get that support network in place and give it a solid chance to really succeed instead of doing it half-heartedly and then have it not change your life. Okay. All right, let's move on to the, um, fourth and final trick that I'm going to teach you. Um, it is, excuse me, to, excuse me, I was looking at the chat. Ditch that strict diet template and customize for you as a unique individual. So here's what I'm talking about. I find that people will get on something, maybe it's even low FODMAP, but it's just like a, a sheet that's like a one size fits all thing. Like just do this and it doesn't even tell you how long to do it or give you like details that make it work in real life. Here's some extreme examples. I've been on Pinterest again. I can't help it. But here's a couple of like IBS things I found on Pinterest. And they're saying, okay, here's what to do for IBS on the one and left here. I guess you're supposed to eat these foods that are in green. There's only 10 things. So I guess we're just going to live off of like rice, oatmeal, and like potatoes forever. And there's even some things on here that are high FODMAP. So I'm not sure where they're getting this. But basically, there's very few of the actual foods in the world are listed here. And it doesn't really tell you like a process. Like how long do you do this? How how like strict do you need to be? It's not complete. The one on the right, same thing. It says foods to eat and there's not actually any foods listed. Foods to avoid, there's like almost nothing listed. It tells you actually kind of like what to eat, but it's very non-specific. And then somehow chocolate is like the only important thing to know about. So this is just, again, it's not gonna work for anybody in real life. Um, you need something that you can individualize and fit into your real world, into your real life, am I right? Stuff like this just doesn't cut it. And the problem with stuff like this is it causes a lot of confusion because you get people like Beth earlier that are kind of like piecing it together from different sources and restricting things that maybe they didn't need to restrict because how do you know? If you feel bad one day and good next day and you ate the same thing, that's so confusing. You can't figure out what to do and it feels like you're just chasing your tail, right? So um, one size doesn't fit all with these diets. Here's one of the main reasons. Like I told you before, and I'm sure you know this, IBS is a bucket diagnosis. You've not actually, nobody's actually even figured out or told you what's actually causing the problem. They've just ruled out other things and they don't actually know what you have going on. There's multiple root causes for IBS, like SIBO that we talked about, or like gluten sensitivity, visceral hypersensitivity, histamine intolerance, depending on what underlying cause you have is going to change um, the eventual personalized diet that you end up on that works best for you, right? So um, the action step here is to really try to get out of that mentality of like, I'm going to try to find the one diet that's like this one food list that I can just do this food list and um, that's the end because that's kind of like the story that you're sold that like that's what you should be able to find and in the end it, it's not a complicated and difficult process to go through the low FODMAP protocol but it is a process of getting to your own version of what works basically and um, I think people are really frustrated around that I even had somebody I got like a negative comment on my Facebook um, the other day because some woman said, you know, I'm so sick of you people putting out um, IBS information that doesn't just tell me what to do. I want you to just tell me what to do. Like, why are you withholding this from me? And in the end, it's that mentality that's wrong of thinking it's just this one list of foods that's going to fix it. You already know that or you wouldn't be here. If, you, if there was a list or a medication that fixed it tomorrow, you know about it, right? Instead, what works is this system that's evidence-based that takes you into your own personalized diet. It maximizes your system and symptom improvement while minimizing restrictions and discomfort, and that's what the low FODMAP protocol is. All right, so here's how to actually personalize the low FODMAP diet. Again, this will be a consult to go over, you guys, so don't miss this. What I have people do is I um, take them through that reintroduction process that I taught you before. So now you know what FODMAP types you're sensitive to and what you're not, okay? 
then you get a list of all the foods and what FODMAP types are in them. So let's say you're sensitive to fructans and you, you're using this Monash app that I taught you about and you pull up um, a food like wheat and it says it has fructans in it. You know you need to limit that food to the serving size that's in the app. But if you're not sensitive to fructans and something says it's high FODMAP but only with fructans, then you can eat that food and probably not have a problem. So um, you go through the process of trying different foods like one at a time starting with the foods that you're less, the least sensitive to, that have the FODMAPs that you're the least sensitive to, and um, doing it in that systematic way while keeping a food journal is what allows you to kind of end that crazy mode of like, what the heck, I ate this breakfast one day and the same breakfast the next day, and like, sorry about that. And um, one day I felt fine, and the next day I had diarrhea. Well, it's because of the other foods that came in that day that had FODMAPs or didn't, right? About It's all about filling that bucket. So following this process, you avoid that confusion. So remember this, you're a unique individual and you know yourself the best, better than your doctor or anybody else. Your body has the innate ability to heal and don't let anybody make you feel otherwise. You can heal from this if you're just given the right conditions and a system that helps you win at this with a loving and supportive approach. So what do you think about this? I hope you um, can understand and see the power of the low FODMAP protocol. That's really my goal is to introduce it to you and share it with you because I want it to be out there and to help as many people as possible. Um, and it really changes lives. What would you do if you could get these results that people get on this and have more time to do the things that you love doing and not focusing on digestive problems? So I'm not sure exactly why you came today, but I have a few ideas just based on what I've seen with my clients. I'm thinking you're probably fed up with the pain and embarrassment of this. You're just sick and tired of it. You're probably frustrated, feeling like you're not sure where to turn next because you keep trying things that don't work. You're starting to worry about the long-term effect of this, like you saw with my clients, that they develop new health problems, and you intuitively, I'm sure, know that um, this could lead into more severe health problems in the future. It can affect your career. It can affect your personal relationships. And time is an issue. You don't have time to read every blog article and every Instagram post that comes out about this, and when you try to do it, it just is confusing because they conflict with each other. Um, and you don't feel like you have the time to like make special food all, every day anyway. So that's a problem. And then you're probably here because you think that if you just have like a really detailed and very easy to follow path and even better social connection, other people doing it with you and professional oversight, that that would help you to be successful. And if that's the true for you, I have good news. It's time that you achieve full control of your digestion, of your health, and of your life. All it takes is a good system with the right information and strong support. It's your time. You came here, you took up an hour of your day to write down these notes and get these tips. You are ready for this. It will work for you. You deserve it. Um, you're owed this chance at a new life, to be honest. And another critical thing I want to share is that nothing I've told you today is theory. I've used this process to reverse IBS hundreds of times in my clinic, and I know that it works, or else I wouldn't be coming on here and sharing it with you, of course. And then another critical thing is that these clients that I have that um, have reversed their IBS with this aren't special in any way. They don't have special resources or special doctors or tons of money. They just have the motivation to apply my steps one at a time, implement them, and change their life. If they can do it, you can too. Think about Beryl. She doesn't even know how to use a computer, and she did it. So you can do it. So do you want to know how to do it, how to achieve radical IBS improvement by implementing this protocol in the correct way? There's basically two options if you do. One is the complicated and confusing way that we've been talking about, trying to piece it together from all over the place, buying books. One book doesn't agree with the other one. A question comes up. It's not answered in the book. Enough of that crazy. I say go the simple and effective route. And if that's the way you want to go, I'd love to invite you to join me inside of Recovery from IBS. 
this course is an A to Z blueprint that allows you to cut your digestive problems by at least 80% within three weeks, yielding life-changing results. It's available completely online, available right now. It's fully made. I'd love to have you in the course. I'm gonna tell you about what it includes, but you do it with me and with my support. Um, here's a story about Melissa. She's one of my clients that went through the course already. She is a very busy, full-time working mom with two young kids. And if you play that game, you know it's crazy. She has a 15-year history of IBS. And in my course, she got 80% remission within two weeks, full remission, no symptoms within two months. Her fatigue, she had extreme fatigue that disappeared. She felt way better with her mood. She was not sad or anxious like she had been before. And when I asked her for a story, Melissa said, Erin, this has changed my life. She's free of her digestive problems and not looking back. Here's what you get in the course. First of all, the complete protocol that takes out the guesswork and the confusion and the overwhelm of doing this. It tells you A to Z what to do, step by step in a very digestible and simple way. It's a 100% virtual course that you can do at your own time from the comfort of your own home. You get unlimited membership for the full lifetime of the course, which is at least five years. Any updates or any bonuses that I put in the course, you're gonna get access to. You'll also get support from me and my team, and you're welcome in our community on Facebook of other course members that can support you. Here's more specifics of what's included in the course. You get three full weeks of really great meal plans. This is like my pro game, my secret sauce is these meal plans. They make life so fun and so easy, no thinking required with all the recipes and shopping lists that you need. You get a ton of handouts and templates that take out the confusion and guesswork from starting this. You just download the template, the handout, do what it says, and you're off to the races. Um, it gives you the confidence to know you're doing it correctly. That's something you don't get from a book or even honestly a lot of clinicians. And then finally, this is like what makes this over the top because you won't get this from anybody else. I have made this work in real life for real people. Imagine that. I give you cheat sheets for going out from day one, eating at restaurants, parties, um, what snacks to eat, how to have really easy, no cook lunches ready to go for your work week, how to swap out your pantry so that you can convert any recipe to a little FODMAP. You know what to eat instead of that, what to put in a recipe instead of that. Use my swap list, tons of resources like that to make it work in real, in real life. So here's what I included in the five modules. The first module um, is to lay the foundation, okay? Very important. It doesn't take a long time to go through these, but first we go through more details about IBS and how to work with your healthcare provider during the program if you decide to do that. Lesson two, we go over more about the scientific evidence supporting the diet, how it affects the microbiome, and the bottom line on that, you guys, is that um, that's been studied. If you do it correctly, it does not hurt your microbiome. If you do it incorrectly, it can. So again, another good reason to join because you know you're going to do it in the correct way. Um, lesson three, I tell you exactly how it works, like what it is, how, like the mechanisms behind it, how it works and why it works. Well, after you've gone through those few videos, you prepare for success. I teach you more about establishing your support network, which apps and websites I recommend using, how to pick your ideal start date. In lesson two, I give you four options for meal plans. So you've got the ones I make plus three other options. I give you the pros and cons of each. So no matter what your situation is, you'll have something that works for your individual needs. Lesson three, I talk about these really critical lifestyle pillars and how to refine those. Um, so getting better sleep, optimizing your exercise, and how to improve your stress management, because those are really critical areas that can't be ignored when it comes to IBS. Here's an example of the type of meal plan. So it basically has a shopping list, the one week meal plan of what to eat, and then I've included the recipes. Just a little trick I played on you. Those foods that I showed you earlier, the pictures of them that have the pancakes and the cookies, those are from the course. So those are all in the meal plans I include in the course. In module three, we actually start the diet and that's when you start getting your rapid improvement, that 80% within three weeks. 
The first lesson, I tell you exactly how to start. No guesswork, tons of resources to save you time and thought, okay? In lesson two, I give you all those resources for eating out, traveling, going to parties from the beginning. You don't have to be like a hermit stuck in your house slaving over the stove all day, okay? That doesn't work. And then um, in lesson three, I give you more resources for day-to-day -day life, like snacking and work week lunches. I explain those handouts. And then in the fourth lesson, I give you this awesome, like I've never seen anybody else do this. It's this seven step final checklist. So you know you're starting prepared. You've checked off these seven things, you're ready to go. Here's what you can expect um, once you've started the diet in module three. Almost no bloating, if any. Say goodbye to your abdominal pain and your cramping. Reduce gas, reduce reflux, if any. Much more normal elimination patterns, especially for diarrhea type, but I also give you tips for what to do for constipation type. More energy and a better mood. So instead of, don't think of this as like a diet that makes you feel horrible, it actually makes you feel better, right? Um, module four is broadening the diet. So all those, that critical information we talked about with being able to introduce foods and improve your nutrition status and your enjoyment of your diet, I teach you exactly how to do that because this is where I see it go wrong. A lot of people are good at teaching the elimination part, but they don't teach the bringing back part very well. So I give you the exact protocol, I give you helpful resources and handouts, and then I tell you even what to do beyond the reintroduction phase that Holt taught you that was like the six weeks. What happens after that? Nobody teaches you that, but really you go into this other phase where you're refining your personalized diet and using my specific protocol to figure out what works best for you. Oh, here's what you can expect in module four. You'll maintain your IBS remission and even improve on it, but you'll also start to be able to eat more food variety and have more confidence and certainty around foods and what to eat. And then finally, in the last module, we go beyond FODMAPs. <laughs> At that point, you're probably like, I wanna hear the word FODMAP ever again. But uh, we get into integrative and functional medicine, and I tell you in the first lesson all about these IBS root causes, like SIBO, and how to address those. Because, hey, what's better than being on a helpful diet is not having to be on a diet at all. So addressing those root causes um, is a great next step. In lesson two, I tell you um, about the world of dietary supplements. I'm not against them, I'm for them, but there's a lot of caution needed and a lot of tips that I include in there. And then in the third lesson, um, I tell you about how to get one-on-one -on -one professional support if that's something that you're, you decide you want to pursue in order to work on your underlying cause. I tell you the type of person to look for and like where to find them, basically. Don't forget, I've included in the course um, a Facebook community that's available and ready for you to join in and talk, about, talk with other people in the course, and I'm in there as well to support you. All right, so are you ready to eliminate your IBS symptoms and change your life? If you are, you might be thinking, okay, Erin, what's the investment for this? Well, I added up all of the different um, parts of the course and it came out to a total value of around $1,500 or 1,200 pounds. But the whole reason why I'm doing this, you guys, is because I got frustrated with how inaccessible this was for people. And part of that was this financial cost that is just not affordable for people. So what I've done is I've been able to package this all up into a way better course fee of only $289 and, or 229 pounds um, total for the course. And um, that doesn't even include, um, or if you join on the live seminar today, you're also gonna get this fast action bonus that I talked with you about earlier, and I'll explain that more in a second. But if you're ready to go, head on over to the website. It's recoveryfromibs.com backslash course, and go ahead and check it out and get started and enrolled over there. So here's what this fast action bonus is all about. If you join while we're live here on the seminar, it's called the Make Your Own Smoothie Template. I'm gonna include this for you, and basically what this does is it ensures that you're never without a nutritious and delicious low FODMAP meal from day one of the protocol. Because it basically says, choose your own adventure. Pick one liquid, pick one protein, one fruit and vegetable, one fat, and it tells you what to pick and like the serving size. You just blitz it all together into the smoothie 
and you can take it on, you know, to work or you can take it for your post workout or whenever you just need a quick meal on the go, you'll never be short. Even if you don't have time to cook, use the template to make a smoothie and you know it's compliant with the program. Okay, so if you head over to the course website, it's again, recoveryfromibs.com backslash course. You're gonna hit the course website and this is what it looks like. Go ahead and scroll down to these turquoise buttons. There's a floating one that says sign me up. You can just click that or um, you can find this one that looks like click here to get instant access because again, it's totally available and ready to go right now. Once you click those, you'll hit this um, checkout page. Go ahead and fill that out and submit it and then just give it a couple minutes and you'll get in your email access to the course shell so you just have your, you know, you get your username and password to log into the course shell where you'll find all the videos and handouts ready to go. You'll also get the link to the Facebook group to request access and I'll preview you in for that. And then you'll also start getting some support emails from me to help you get started and support you as you begin. Another really critical thing about the course, you guys, is um, I've never seen anybody do this, but I have this six week money back guarantee, and which is a long time. And the reason why this doesn't even bother me is because I've been doing this for so long for so many people and I know it works um, and I'm supporting you through it. So if for some reason you run into a snag, just reach out to me and often it just takes a tweak here and there to get you the results you're looking for. But in the end, I don't want you to have any fear about wasting money on another thing that doesn't work because I know you've tried multiple things already. Okay, so I don't want you to have any fear about that. If you try it, you give it a go, show me that you did it. I just need to see your food diary and your symptom form from the first phase of the protocol. Doesn't work for you, just get in touch and um, money back guarantee, I'll send it back to you. All right, so here's the breakout of the value of everything that's included in the course. I start out you know, looking at low FODMAP packages from dietitians, and those averaged out to about almost $800 right there. So, and that doesn't even include, most of them don't provide resources like this that I've developed. Um, that's just for the time to sit with them and learn what you're gonna learn from the course. So when you total it all up, it's a savings of about 80%. And then if you get it today live on the seminar, you're getting even more than an 80% off value because you'll get that fast action bonus. It's the make your own smoothie template. So if you're thinking um, today, when you came on this seminar about an hour ago, if you were thinking that you're at a loss of what to do to stop your digestive problems, you feel like you're just, you can't figure it out on your own, um, you're in the right place. This is the right thing for you because I know that it works. Or if you are thinking, I've even looked at low FODMAP or I've even tried it and I'm not sure it will help. Well, almost every time I've had somebody come into my practice telling me that they're doing low FODMAP or they've done it, when I look at their food diary, I find huge mistakes. And it's because the good resources that haven't been available to the vast majority of people. Um, and that's why I've created this. So even if you think low FODMAP might not work for you, um, try it out because I'll help you through to do it the right way. And again, if it doesn't work, you've got that money back guarantee. And finally, you might be thinking, I'm super busy. I don't know if I have time for this and I don't know if my family will eat this food. Well, first of all, I've had a lot of busy people like Melissa do it and um, it actually ends up saving people time. The meals are thought, you know, you don't have to put any thought into making it and I have my meal plan set up so that you only have to cook dinner like every other night lunches are leftovers and breakfasts are super simple so um it's very time consuming or time saving and very simple to do especially on a busy um time budget people love it and then finally on eating the food my three little kids eat the food my clients kids eat the food I never had a husband complain it tastes delicious. And again, I've included four different options for meal plans so that if you, for some reason, don't like mine or you get sick of mine, you've got other options. Okay. So, and I'll help you through that in the course if it's a challenge. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, go ahead and start this um, 15 minute countdown and we're going to do a little Q and A. And then remember, if you uh, go ahead and join me for recovery from IBS while we're live on the um, seminar, then I'm gonna include the make your own smoothie template for you, which is awesome. 
So um, will you go and type in your questions in that Q&A section, or if you have a hard time finding it, um, put it in the chat area. But while you do that, I'm gonna answer a couple questions that I get um, that are pretty common. One common question I get is, um, what if I don't get results? What if I get in the course and I try it and um, my IBS doesn't improve from it? The first thing in that scenario that I'd ask you to do is to get in touch with me because again, often it just takes some tweaking. Um, it's easy to miss things when you're first starting out and then I'll help you make sure you're doing it the right way. And then usually that takes care of it. But then if it doesn't take care of it, um, you've got that money back guarantee. So just tell me you want it. Show me you've done the work that you've tried the diet and um, doesn't work your money back. I have no problems doing that. I'm not here to try to get money from you. I'm really here to help you. So um, no problems there. Um, another, um, another common question that I get is, um, what if I haven't been diagnosed with IBS? It's called recovery from IBS. Um, don't worry so much about that. If you have these symptoms, uh, you could easily be one of those 15% of the population that has IBS that's not diagnosed. So what I would encourage you to do is give it a go. Join me, try it out, give it a try. If you have the symptoms, it's going to help you. I've never seen it not work for somebody at all. Um, and then if it doesn't, you know you have that money back guarantee. And then at the same time, um, you know, feel free to talk to me while you're in the course about the situation with your healthcare provider. There can be a variety of reasons why people struggle to get a diagnosis. Like maybe your doctor is requiring you to have a celiac test and you have to eat gluten for six weeks in order to get that. But you know that if you ate gluten for six weeks, it would about kill you. And so off you go into life with no diagnosis, but still having your digestive problems. So um, I would worry less about whether you have IBS or not, technically by your medical chart and more about whether or not you have the symptoms, okay? All right, let's see what other questions we have. I'm gonna go ahead and open the Q&A here in the chat. Erin, there's a uh, question here that says, how long does it take to complete the program? Okay, thanks, Carolyn. So that's a great question. If you, um, if you start the program, it's self-paced, but I say to give yourself at least a week to watch the videos leading up to starting and to give yourself um, a chance to meal, you know, get your meal plan and buy your food. So give yourself at least a week to start there. And then um, once you're on it, it's usually within a week that you experience dramatic improvement, but I like to be conservative. So I say within two weeks, just maybe give yourself a week to kind of have some like mistakes basically. And then a second week to like be in the zone. So that's three weeks basically to get that 80% improvement at least. And then um, the next phase of the program is that six weeks of reintroducing FODMAPs and figuring out which ones you're actually more sensitive to or not. So you are three weeks in and then you take six weeks to do that. So that's nine weeks to get to your like what I call individualized personalized version of the diet still feeling good. Most people will drop you at that point, but the course does continue beyond that into the next phase of further individualizing. And that's really um, an open-ended thing. You'll you know, go into module five and start to learn about root causes and how you can address root causes. From there, it depends on what you end up doing. But really for the, the main improvement, you, you'll need three weeks. And then um, for the traditional, Elimination and reintroduction, it will be nine weeks. Does that answer your question? Thanks, Erin. And um, there's a question that says, what else will I need to buy? Oh, yeah, thank you. Okay, good question. There's no hidden costs. Um, out of the apps and websites and everything I recommend, there's um, basically one that, might, that costs $10 that you don't even have to get. You'll have to buy food, obviously, but the food isn't weird or more expensive than normal food. So um, that's kind of a break even thing. It's helpful to have a food scale and that can cost like 10 to $20. Um, so that's not a huge expense, but if you don't have a food scale, you might wanna invest in that. And then um, 
meal plans. You don't have to pay anything to get meal plans that are included in the course. And then I do give three other options of where to get some good low FODMAP meal plans. Some of those do have a small monthly charge if you decide to go that route of like five to $10 a month. But again, you don't have to even get any of those. You can just do the program ones. So, and I teach you how to make your own. If you're the type of person that likes to do that, you, you know, that's great. Um, but I just know that a lot of people don't have the headspace and the time to be figuring out their own low FODMAP meal plan every week. And so I like to give people a lot of options there. So thanks, Carolyn. Any more? No, that's it, Erin. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all so much for coming. Uh, I appreciate you being here and I welcome all of you who have joined. Again, if you have any questions, please get in touch 